I'm going to be dyeing this, um, this George Cleverly shoe this morning. Um, it's had a huge amount of work. If you've not already watched the, um, watched the previous videos, um, this, is, this is the other shoe in very, very sorry condition. Um, but we're not going to be dying that one today. I'll, I'll do that one at a later stage. Um, let me just pop on, I need to pop on a, a latex glove. Um, I can't stress enough. The dyeing process, ideally you don't do it anywhere precious. So I'm, I'm at work. I shouldn't really be doing it in here, but never mind. Um, I'd, I'll be very, very careful. Um, this shoe's been resurfaced. Um, it was horribly cracked and it's, it's taken a long time to cut a few microns of skin away. But it's, it's very smooth and it'll take to this dye very, very well. All I'm going to use is a, is a cheap artist brush and um, I've got some... Uh, actually, I thought to have more. I've only got a few dribbles, but it's enough to begin the process. Um, I've just got some, um, uh, some, some leather dye in here. Um, I always avoid the... Um, the vinyl type dyes, they're, they're oil based I think. Um, I, I generally use um, solvent dyes and it's, there's nothing more to it than just simply, you just simply paint, paint the skin and that's it. Um, allow it to soak in very carefully. Um, it's a slow process, you just, um, just, just let the, you can see the skin, it kind of, it acts almost like blotting paper. Um, if I put a little dribble on, you'll see it expand. Watch it, see, look, it expands about five, five millimetres around the brush. Um, it's, it, it's just, just a very slow process, just slowly working. It's important to get it right down into the welting and uh, make sure the, the stitches, everything. This, obviously, the leather edge, the, um, that's all been sanded, which I did in a previous, um, previous video. Um, make sure, you, make sure you, you do the leather edging absolutely everywhere. Um, though it is a messy process if you're not careful. You do not want to be spilling this. I can tell you from experience, it's not funny. It's no joke. I spilt, um, I spilt, in fact, it was this particular pot. I knocked it over in my house um, whilst I was making a, a YouTube video for Bespoke Addict YouTube. And um, I, was, I was chattering away saying, I can't stress enough, this is a messy, a messy task. Do not spill it. And I, uh, I accidentally clipped the, um, clipped the edge of the, uh, the pot and up ended the whole lot across my table um, and it, it, it flooded off the table into my lap and then it also it rolled off the edge of the table onto a um, onto a onto a beautiful um, beautiful leather um, armchair and all over my wooden floor it made a dreadful dreadful mess um, so just beware you know what I mean it is a messy task um, it's, a, it's a slightly slow task if you go too quickly um, you, you get, um, you flick the bristles and it, it, you get little spatters everywhere. So just go very, very slowly. And um, there's nothing more to it than what I'm, I'm demonstrating here. Um, sometimes you get like, um, when you buy, you get these little, it's like a bit, a bit of wool on the end of a, a piece of metal. And um, you can dip that in and, and spread it about. It's a bit of a crude weapon, if I'm honest with you. I try to generally avoid those. I go a little bit more slowly with, with a brush. Um, I don't want to get it all over the elastics here, so I work very, very slowly. And uh, it's just, yeah, just make sure everywhere is touched. I'll do a complete coat, I'll allow it to dry, and then I'll give it another coat just to make sure the colour's intense. Um, this shoe, it, it has had a huge amount of work. A lot of this stitching that you see here, it's been completely replaced by hand. Um, it's from the 60s, this shoe. And um, not only with the, uh, the leather skins in, truly dreadful condition, they were stretched, they were dry, horribly cracked, um, much of the stitching had perished and all of this, the whole lot, all around here, it's all been completely replaced by hand but I've been careful to work through the maker's original holes and uh, those elastics have been, they've been taken out because they were very very stretched and they were all baggy so I've undone all of the stitching taken the elastic out and I trimmed the elastic by about 10 millimetres and then put the elastic back in a little bit smaller but through the same stitch holes. Um, anyway, that's not what uh, this film's about. I'm just trying to show you the dyeing process. I don't actually have as much dye as I thought. This pot's nearly empty. Um, I thought I bought a new one. In fact, I know I bought a new one. I just can't find it. Um, this is the one I upended in my own house a, f a few months back. But um, we've got enough dye here to, uh, to give you an idea of what... Um, what the process is about. You don't need to see me dye this whole shoe. Um, it's an extremely repetitive process. Um, you really don't want to watch me do the whole shoe. Um, so what I'll do, I'll continue 
very carefully, I'll complete this shoe, and then I will find my other pot of dye, which I do know I've got somewhere, I just can't remember where I put it, and I'll, I'll go over the shoe again in a, in a day or two, make sure that it's extremely well absorbed. It might be a little bit of overkill doing two layers, but I just want to make sure we've got an intense depth. I do not want to be relying on the, um, on the shoe creams and the, and the, and the polishers to, to, to apply the colour. Um, and I want to make sure that there's plenty of dye that's well absorbed. And uh, as I say, I'm just working very slowly to make sure that I don't, I don't get any splashes or flicks anywhere. Let's just go around that edge of that, the, the sole edge there. And I always moisturise these sole edges as well with, um, with, 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 with leather cream. It's only a skin, and it will absorb moisturiser, and it does actually, um, it does actually go, go dry. Um, so it's important to moisturise the soles as well as the linings. But, um, very pleased with the outcome of this shoe. It has been an enormous task to get it to this stage. Um, I've been working on it on and off for months and months and months. In fact, more than a year. Not consistently, but do, do a bit of work, maybe half an hour, an hour, then get fed up or, 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 or you know, have to do something else. Um, I can't just continue, continue. Um, your tedium gets the better of you, and you, you then start to, if you're getting fed up, you start to rush the job, and you can make a bit of a hash of it. But um, yeah, it's coming out very well. Um, when you um, when you dye fresh leather, it always comes out extremely matte. Um, the the colour's even, but when you look at it when it's dry, it looks a bit disappointing. It almost it almost looks like suede. That's absolutely nothing to worry about. It's completely normal. When this is totally dry and had a couple of um, couple of coats, I'll come back to this shoe with the um, the the coloured leather cream, and uh, I'll give this skin, which is extremely thirsty, um, it's desperate for moisturiser. I'll give it very very heavy moisturising, several coats, and um, the, uh, the the colour will deepen. We'll get a nice sheen. We've got rather a noise in the background here. We've got a street sweeper coming. That's what that noise is. So I'll just ignore that. Just continue let the street sweeper pass. That's the problem. I always work very early in the mornings. Um, so obviously we've got street sweepers and whatever outside. There we go, it's gone. Um, yes, I was saying when, when I apply the um, when I apply the moisturizer, the skin obviously it it kind of plumps the surface of the skin. When it's um, when it's as dehydrated and, and, and dry as this, the skin it's, it's only microscopic, but the skin sort of shrinks very slightly, and uh, it was one of the reasons that it causes cracking. But this is the, the cracking's all been sanded away. Um, when when I moisturise this, the skin will kind of plump, and and it gives it a, a more lustrous surface, which you can buff before before polishing. I'm going to I'm going to stop here. I don't want to waffle on. It's um, you, as you can see, this is. Um, it's starting to take shape. It does look a little bit um, a bit patchy, um, but this is just one very light application. I'll give it another application when I find my other my other my other fresh um, what's it called a pot of dye, and I'll, I'll just simply continue this process. I'll do it at least twice. I might even do it a third time, just for just so that I'm absolutely sure that the the, the colour's as deep as it can be. And of course, I'll do all all of the edging. Um, yeah, but. Uh, quickly remind you of what the other shoe looks like. Horrendously cracked. Um, it's going to be at least 20 hours to bring this shoe up to the stage where it's ready for dyeing. I've got to, I've got to cut all of that, um, that surface away. A few microns, if you've not seen me do it, have a look at a couple of the previous films and you will, you will see me cutting the surface off this shoe. Now that you can see it starting to take dye, you, you can see we've got a, a, a very presentable surface. By the time this has been beautifully moisturised, polished, um, not, not polished, but you have to buff the moisturiser. Um, you buff it dry to get a good flat surface in preparation for, 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 for the final polish. But this shoe will come up looking really quite new. Um, it certainly won't look 50 years old and almost totally destroyed like this one.